Hello, and welcome to this Apex SQL Enforce general overview video. Apex SQL Enforce is a SQL developer tool used to create, maintain, and run a set of best practice code rules against a SQL Server database, or SQL script. The process of executing rules can be set to run unattended via the command line interface. A set of predefined rules is included with the product, but rules can be updated and customized. Entirely new rules can be written as well. Once Apex SQL Enforce is started, we can start with a new rule base. Clicking the New button in the Rule Base group of the main ribbon initiates the New Rule Base dialog. Besides a name and description for our new rule base, we can create a blank rule base or use an existing rule base as a starting point. Choosing to create a blank rule base will create a new rule base with no rules or categories. For the purpose of this video, we'll choose to create a new rule base based on the existing one by checking the Create Rule Base from Existing option. Since Apex SQL Enforce comes with pre written rule bases, we are going to choose from one of these by using the Browse button. This will open a location where Apex SQL rule bases are located. At the time this video was created, there are currently four rule bases included in the installation. These are two examples called Tutorial and Apex SQL, and there are two variants of these depending on the preferred programming language, C Sharp or VB.NET. Let's create a new rule base on the Apex SQL example. We'll choose to include all rules from the Apex SQL example by selecting the Include Rules checkbox. Besides rules, when creating a new rule base from the existing one, categories that are specified in the existing rule base will be imported as well. In this case, for the Apex SQL rule base, we have 10 categories. In the case of creating a new rule base from an existing one, without checking the Import Rules option, no rules will be imported, but categories from the selected rule base will be imported along with all the underlying category descriptions. In any case, categories, as well as imported rules, can always be modified later. Besides importing rules from existing samples and creating new rules using the Import button, Rules from other rule bases can be imported into the current rule base. Rules from the current rule base will be compared with rules from the rule base selected to be imported so the user can pick specified rules to import. Comparing rules shows line by line differences visually in the lower section of the rule base import window. Once we have a rule base with the appropriate rules loaded, let's review what else we can configure before running the rule base against a database. Using the Edit button, the Edit Rule Base dialog appears offering options for modifying name or adding a description for the current rule base. Particularly important is the Threshold tab. We can configure various values that will abort a review in case of a violation, impact, or errors that are greater than the specified ceiling. Similar to aborting the process of executing rules by specifying a value in the Impact field, Running rules will be finished, but marked as failed. Another part of the rule base is the category configuration. Categories are useful to group rules and rule results. The Categories button from the main ribbon displays the Categories dialog. This is where all of the categories can be reviewed, along with the number of rules currently assigned to that particular category and a description of the category. Category management is straightforward, so creating new categories or editing of existing ones is simple. It is important to mention that a category cannot be deleted if it contains at least one rule. Now that we have covered categories, let's switch to rules. Once loaded, all rules appear in the main grid, grouped by category by default. Rule management is available under the Rules group in the main ribbon where rules can be added, deleted, or modified. If we need a new rule similar to an existing one, we can clone one rule and make necessary changes instead of creating a rule from scratch. The same set of functions is available from the main grid context menu. To run a rule, individually or group of rules, simply check them in the main grid and use either the Run button from the main ribbon 
the Run command or the Run Checked Rules command from the context menu. We want to run all the rules for the purpose of this video, so we'll choose the Check All command from the context menu to check all the rules. Using one of the available options, we'll run all the rules from the grid. Before the rules are executed, we'll need to provide a connection to a database or SQL script if we want to check an individual SQL script. After all rules are executed, the Result Summary dialog appears, with general information about passed and failed rules. We can review information about the rule base result, whether it passed or failed, rule base result summary and details, as well as specifics on violations and processed rules and objects. In this specific case, the impact score was much higher than 10, which was our failure threshold, which caused this to fail. Almost 90% of rules passed, 10% failed. Rules that failed were mostly with a low severity. Besides this general overview of executed rules, we can check each and every executed rule result. In order to show only failed rules for easier review, we could set this by unchecking the Past Rules in the Options dialog. However, since this option needs to be configured before running rules, we will simply group results by the result column, dragging it to the grouping area. This will give us a nice overview of all the failed rules. Let's investigate one of the failed rules in detail. We can do that by highlighting it, which shows additional result details. Under the Results tab, we can find some general details about the rule and an object that it was processed against. Switching to the Description tab, we can find out additional information and context about the rule, including links to the additional content. The Violation tab shows if the violation is low, medium, or high, as well as advice on how to fix the problem. One of the important parts of the Results section is the Fix SQL tab that contains the actual SQL script that can be used to fix the problem that caused the rule to fail in the first place. In order to avoid using each and every Fix SQL script to fix a problem, we can export all scripts into a single SQL file that can be executed. We'll do this by using the Export button and choosing the Export to Fix SQL option. This can be done for all results or for the checked ones. For the purpose of this video, we want all to be exported. This combines all the Fix SQL scripts into a single one that can be reviewed in an integrated editor and edited if there is a need. Once we are satisfied with the script, we can execute it against a selected database directly from the integrated editor using the Execute button. Changes that should be applied against a database are wrapped up in transactions, so either everything is applied in case of no errors or none of the charges are applied. Although the best practices rule bases that are shipped with Apex SQL Enforce are very comprehensive, you may still want to create your own rules. So, the next step is to check how to create a new rule. We'll click the Add button to initiate the New Rule dialog. Rule ID will be automatically generated, so we can specify a name and description for the new rule. Next, we can choose if a new rule will run against database objects, like tables or T-SQL code. For the selected rule type, we can pick a specified item from the drop-down list. Each rule must be assigned to a specific type, for example, a table. Under the Condition tab, the actual code that runs the rule needs to be written. Here, we can see that if the active object, which is a primary key based on what we specified as the type, is not clustered, then we will raise a violation. This will fail the rule for this object, and we'll be able to note the details when reviewing the results. In this video, we have shown how to create a new best practices rule base from an existing one, how to manage rules and categories, as well as how to configure failure and or abort thresholds for rule bases. We also reviewed how to edit individual rules and also review processing results and details. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit apexsql.com.